One of the most interesting types of stories, in my opinion, are those about characters seeking redemption, be it a character trying to atone for a sin or a mistake that they made on their own, or were forced to make by another. And especially so, when the story goes into detail about the flaws of said character seeking redemption. And one of the best examples of a story like this is the personal struggle of Passione's own traitor, a man more scared of his stand than anyone else's. The toxic strawberry himself, Panicata Fugo from Part 5, Golden Wind. Fugo is one of those rare cases in a creative work where the creator has a chance to go back and fix a choice they made while writing the original story, and by doing so, lets the situation develop naturally in a way that would be very different than what they had originally planned. Though before that, we should actually first understand where Fugo gets his name from. The name Pinacota Fugo is constructed of two different references, the first being Pinacota, an Italian dessert which literally means cooked cream. It is comprised of cream mixed with gelatin to create a pudding-like substance. The Pinacota is usually served with either a side of fruit or with fruit flavored mixed into it. The most popular version of Pinacota is Strawberry Pinacota, which kind of explains Fugo's strawberry tie and his strawberry esque design, while also explaining the close bond he has with Narancia, whose name literally contains the Italian word for the fruit orange. And also playing off of that, Fugo and Bruno get along very well as they were the two founding members of this part of Passione because they're both Italian desserts, versus all the other members which Fugo doesn't relate to nearly as well besides of course as I mentioned Arancia, because they're all main course meals. And then you have the second half of his name, Fugo, which has a dual reference built into it. First being the word Fugo in Italian which means to dismiss, send away, or banish. Which fits the themes of Fugo with not only his family disowning him, but also in his dismissal from part 5 as a whole. The second reference found within the name is the Fugos, or the Fire Balloons, a weapon created and used by Japan in World War II. They were anti-personnel bombs strapped to hydrogen balloons and floated across the North Pacific Ocean aimed to strike down at the United States. They did this through a timer and sandbag system which seemed pretty primitive in comparison to the United States bombers at the time. And because of this, they actually ended up being mostly ineffective, but did require require an extreme intelligence to actually construct and calculate the movement patterns of, which fits with Fugo's calculative mentality. And also, the only known recorded death caused by a Fugo explosion were that of innocent civilians, which could fit into Fugo's guilt trip over Narancia's death, as he is the one who got him involved with Passione, and also all the innocent civilians he ends up killing in Golden Heart, Golden Ring. Now design-wise, Fugo has a very strange outfit, wearing a suit adorned with a bunch of small holes and a large open chest area, along with his strawberry tie. And this has led to a popular fan nickname of Swiss Cheese Boy or something along those lines, helped by the fact that his name, Pinacota, is cream-based. But what is more likely is that his design is in reference to strawberries, with the holes being the Akeen pips on a strawberry, and also the strawberry-covered tie plays into this. And not to mention that in the flashbacks that occur throughout the entirety of Part 5, Fugo has a suit which fills in these holes specifically for the colder days of the year, showing that the holes in his outfit weren't just meant to be big empty holes, but they're part of a two-piece outfit. Also, an interesting design choice by Araki is that in 1998 it was confirmed through a jump interview that Fugo only wears thongs. This isn't really important to his character or overall story, but it's a little fun fact about him and his design. Now, one of the aspects about Fugo's character that makes him so interesting compared to just about every other character in JoJo is how he is the only character that Hirohiko Araki actually made an effort to correct in his 30 years of writing JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. With Kira being a close second, but that was more of a reinvention than actually trying to fix him. And this is where I'd like to dispel one of the biggest false rumors about Fugo that people have passed around over the years. Fugo was not removed from part 5 because Purple Haze was too powerful. This has never been true, and characters with overpowered abilities have always stuck around in JoJo groups, Okiyasu being a great example of this. So, why did Fugo disappear three-fifths into the story of Part 5? Well, we wouldn't actually know the true details about it until the reprints of Part 5, but we did get a hint to it two years after the final chapter of Part 5 debuted, when Araki would commission Mio Shotaro to author a light novel that would become a canon story in the events of Part 
Part 5, which would detail Fugo's betrayal arc. Then later on, in the reprints that we would get, Araki explains that the reason Fugo was written out is because he couldn't bring himself to write in Fugo's betrayal. Even though he had already written up plans for it and had selected Fugo during his introduction, this is because during the time of Part 5's writing, Araki ended up dealing with a lot of dark issues in his life, and in this depression he grew very close to the Passione boys, calling them the golden wind in his life that kept him going. And so, he just didn't have the heart to write in a story where someone who he considered to be a close friend and a guiding light at this point to turn their back on him and the readers because that idea just made him way too sad. Though luckily, he didn't end up destroying these notes, but instead handed them off to Shotaro and together they created the novel that is Golden Heart, Golden Ring. But with one key detail changed from Araki's original design, by Araki's request of course. Giorno doesn't kill Fugo in the end. But instead, it was changed to Fugo disappears after indirectly helping his friends and betraying Passione by killing their number one stand hitman. This would logically remove Fugo from the story and allow Araki to save one of his friends from a tragic fate. And then, ten years later for Versus Jojo, the light novel Purple Haze Feedback is published and explains deeper the mentality of Fugo. And of course, there are some slight inconsistencies between all three sources, be it that Fugo never brings up anything that happens in Golden Heart Golden Ring in Purple Haze Feedback, and of course Araki didn't ever plan for there to be two novels written past the point of Part 5, they all do work with each other and display one of the best cases of a character evolving naturally over time. Because as Fugo's story goes, he was an incredibly gifted child born into a family that valued status over everything else. This meant that Fugo would become their trophy child, something that would be put on display for everyone else to show off how great their bloodline is. And because of this special treatment, he was naturally bullied by all of his siblings and anyone he went to school with, which would cause Fugo to slowly start to hate his own gift, growing a logically pessimistic view on life. Why should I even care or try to be good at anything if there's always going to be someone better and I'll never be as remembered as the great? was a common thought for Fugo, but he did have one person in his life who made it worth living, this being his grandmother, a sweet old woman who was both blunt and caring, someone who would treat Fugo as a person and not as a gifted trophy child. Though sadly, when Fugo was 13 and away at college, she passed away. And when he got the news, all he wanted to do was fly home for her funeral, but he had his request denied and his account locked so he was stuck at the university, and this stress built upon his slowly fading care in academia, which in turn caused Fugo to struggle in his core classes. And then after failing a single test, he was brought into the office of one of his professors, who berated his reasons for his declining grades, and in turn, devalued his grandmother's worth to him, and in that moment, something in Fugo broke. His inner nature came out, the uncontrollable beast that would later become his stand, a rage that built up over years of abuse over his intelligence and learning skills. Fugo picks up a nine pound dictionary, one of the most on the nose symbols of intelligence, and then repeatedly beats in the head of the professor, turning a symbol of his gift into a weapon. He wasn't in a blind rage when he did this either, his mind was clear, he had all realization of what he was doing, and still, he didn't stop. In fact, the man only lived because Fugo was pulled away from him by security. His actions were cold, calculated, and fierce much like his stand would later become. From here, Fugo was disowned by his own family out of fear that his actions would stain their name. His life was now over. No family, no school, no money. Fugo had nothing at this point. And it was in that moment that he met a man. Someone who recognized Fugo's gifts, but did not see him only as that. A man who reminded him greatly of his late grandmother. And it was in that moment when the man asked him to join his organization that Fugo had no reason to turn him down. So, Fugo joined Pashio and helped his friend Bruno rise up the ranks of the organization, acting as his advisor for what he should and shouldn't do, while also recruiting Abakio and Rancia. And over time, he took on missions that he thought Bruno just didn't have the heart for, like executions. He was an extension of Bruno in a way, but he couldn't remain that forever, as when Bruno chose to betray Passione, Fugo chose to stay, as it was the most logical choice to make, but this decision would end up haunting him for the rest of his life. Though he didn't know it at the time, but the decision did comfort Bruno in a way. He had picked Fugo for his ability to logically solve a problem, and Fugo's decision reassured him that he was traveling down a path that he believed in, even if it wasn't the one that was most logically safe. 
though the safety would soon be challenged, as Fugo was given a direct order from the boss to execute Bruno and the gang. He teamed up with the number one stand hitman and former partner of Mista, Rigatoni. Fugo would be sent on this assassination mission, and for the mission, Fugo decided to use a non passion stand user to get the attention of his former allies. Fugo also made sure to reduce the number of casualties, but it didn't help that they were all innocents. And by the end of the story, he had fully betrayed Passione, leading to the death of Rigatoni indirectly, and also instead of following Bruno out of Venezia and rejoining with the group, he decided to disappear within the struggle, completely abandoning his former life, running away like he always does. And this regret would eat away at Fugo for six months, until Passione finds him again and gives him an ultimatum. He either dies here, or takes on a mission for redemption and rejoins Passione. He accepts, and over the mission, Fugo contemplates both his actions and his friend's actions during the events of Part 5. And in doing this, Fugo begins to understand himself more than he ever had before. Learn that he has always been using his intellect as a crutch, as something to blame for his misfortune or his sadness, but instead of learning to deal with it, like everyone else in Passion did with their issues, he chose to run away from it and hide behind it to cover up real issues. And after finally coming to understand this, Fuga learns not only to take actions on his own accord, but also to control his stand. Purple Haze. Purple Haze is a reflection of Fugo's inner rage, a stand that takes the shape of a large Roman centurion with their mouth sewn shut and body parts stitched on. The design was to help enforce the idea of a wild or crazy stand, Araki says in the Jojo Veller. We are also shown that it snarls and lashes out at anything within its range. It's a horror described best by Abakio as it strikes like a bomb and departs like a storm. It's a stand that truly reflects the user's personality. Now, Purple Haze gets its name from the Jimi Hendrix song of the same name, Purple Haze. The song itself is about being lost in a haze, the term Purple Haze being used to make the haze appear unnatural in a sense, which a lot of people have said the song is heavily influenced by drugs, but Hendrix himself has claimed that it wasn't a direct influence, but could have had some unintentional side effects, given he was doing a lot of drugs at the time. Now, the real major influence Hendrix cites for Purple Haze is a dream he had once. In this dream, Hendrix found himself walking under the sea, and he wandered aimlessly, constantly shrouded by a purple haze-like substance. This left Dream Hendrix traumatized. He felt trapped under the ocean, until, through his pure faith alone, Jesus descended onto him, saving him from both the bottom of the ocean and banishing the purple haze. This is reflected both in the original story of Part 5 and in Purple Haze feedback, first with Fugo's Purple Haze being tamed by Giorno in the Man in the Mirror fight. Giorno being used as a metaphor for the Son of God as he is the Son of Dio and coming down to Fugo and cleansing his Purple Haze. And then this Christ figure returns to Fugo's life six months later, offering him redemption in the form of a mission. And on this mission, Fugo not only learns to calm his Haze, but effectively makes it his own for the first time. What makes Purple Haze such a deadly stand that Fugo needed saving from it? Well, it's the a virus that houses itself within the fist capsules of Purple Haze. A virus that will melt and eat away a person, leaving nothing left in under 30 seconds. Fugo is also not immune to this ability either. It's a stand made out of pure rage and is uncontrollable. And just like his gifted intellect, Fugo hates his stand. He views it as an ugly side of himself, and he rejects it. Until, in reflecting on his life decisions and the decisions of his friends, Fugo finds resolve in life, and in doing so, Purple Haze evolves into Purple Haze Distortion, a much less manic and crazy version of his stand, and much more controllable. And with that, Fugo gains a greater understanding of his ability, and his perception increases as well, allowing Fugo to control the virus to a certain degree. Now it has grown into a much stronger and way more destructive ability, now able to dissolve a person within seconds of contact. Along with that, it now has the ability to target and eat other viruses, and this acts as a drawback to Purple Haze Distortion. That is, if Fugo isn't careful, the Purple Haze virus will target itself, say two different capsules are burst at the same time, and will completely nullify the effect. And this acts as a reminder to Fugo that he must stay true to these new life ideals, as if he were to return to his old ways, he would effectively dissolve all the change and progress he made to get to where he is today. Now, Fugo's development as a character can't be solely credited to Hirohiko Araki. As I said earlier, Araki's original plan for Fugo wasn't nearly as glorious, a Golden Heart Golden Ring scenario where Giorno ends up killing him. But thanks to Kohei Kadono and Maya Shotaro, we got a much more interesting story of betrayal, redemption, and self-understanding. And when these three came together, they turned Araki's biggest regret in his years of writing JoJo, and one of the weirdest write-offs, into something I would consider pure perfection in a written form.
And if you enjoyed this video and would like to support more videos like it in the future, I have a Patreon over at patreon.com slash guy. And if you want to grow and develop over your life and have three other writers write a story about you, well, your first step is buying a copy of Shia Mineta from Funimation.com slash show slash Shia Mineta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist. Buy yourself a copy of Shia Mineta and go on about your life.